hello dear students uh, today i'll be discussing the supreme court of india this is uh, from indian government and politics it is relevant for uh, those who are in semester 4 so this is the structure of uh, the indian judicial system unlike the american system which has uh, a double system of judiciary which means that the uh, the federal there is a federal court and every state that comprises the us federation have their own judicial system but in india we have an integrated judiciary which means that there is a supreme court which sits at the apex means it is the highest court and the high court and the subordinate court follow so there is only one supreme court for all over india and every other state has their own high court and there are also subordinate to begin with uh, first we have to understand that which part of the constitution talks about the supreme court it is part 5 of the indian uh, constitution which deals with the indian judicial system we have uh, the organization jurisdiction powers and all the procedure that supreme court follows all of it is contained in part 5 of the constitution to begin with at present there are 31 judges that is one chief justice and 30 other judges and this number has been increasing uh, since years and who increases this the parliament so just by a simple majority the parliament can amend and make changes in how many judges constitute or how many uh, judges are there in supreme court so it is the parliament's power now who appoints the supreme court judges it is the president however while appointing the chief justice of the supreme court the president consults the judges of the supreme court and the high court so the president on his own does not make this appointment it is in consultation with the judges of the supreme court and the high court in case of chief justice of the supreme court another convention that is followed is that the senior most judge of the supreme court is appointed as the chief justice of india and in case of appointment of judges other than chief justice so if uh, any other judge of the supreme court is to be appointed the president consults the chief justice and the chief justice makes his decision based on uh, he also consults the senior most judges of the supreme court so if try to uh, read about the collegium system uh, where collegium means a group of uh, judges whom the chief justice uh, consults and whatever advice the collegium or the group uh, decides the advice is binding on the president then the qualifications uh, firstly citizen of india and these are either of uh, either of the three so if uh, he is a judge of high court for 5 years then can be appointed as a judge if not so then high court advocate for 10 years and uh, also a distinguished jurist in the opinion of the president so either of the three uh, has to happen then a fellow uh, a person can be appointed as a, a judge of the supreme court then the tenure for how long do they hold the office no such fixed tenure has been mentioned in the constitution they can be in office until the age of 65 years and if they want to resign whom do they give their resignation to the president who is the appointing authority and he can be removed from office by the president but on the advice of the parliament see that how are the judges removed first of all on what grounds like for what reason a person who is acting as the judge of the supreme court can be removed on proved misbehavior if they have misbehaved or incapacity if they are not fulfilling their duties uh, on the grounds of incapacity the judges can be removed and who can remove the supreme court judges it is the parliament and what is the process known as it is referred to as impeachment so the president can remove a judge of the supreme court after an address by the parliament has been presented to him so what happens first of all a resolution is passed now if it is if it is originating in the lok sabha 100 members have to support a resolution uh, that so and so judge needs to be impeached and in case it is originating in the rajya sabha 50 members so depending on 
the house depending on the house which house it is originating a resolution is first of all passed and it is given to the speaker in case it is lok sabha and in case of rajya sabha to the chair now what do they do a three member committee Uh, you can read here chief justice or judge of supreme court a chief justice of high court and a distinguished jurist so these three make a committee and this committee investigates the charge and if found guilty the motion is moved to the other house so first of all motion originates in one house it is investigated then it goes to the other house and if both the houses individually they pass the motion by a special majority then the president passes an order to remove the judge so both lok sabha and rajya sabha together can remove the judge of the supreme court like they can uh, they can pass a resolution and uh, the president based on that resolution can remove the judge of the supreme court so this is the entire process of removal it is interesting to know that no judge of the supreme court has been impeached so now what are the powers of the supreme court the powers of the supreme court have been roughly divided under the following categories so power also refers to here the jurisdiction means the uh, geographical extent or uh, the extent of power that they enjoy first of all original jurisdiction here we have to understand the term what does original mean so first we'll see what uh, what kind of cases can the supreme court hear in here in this case if there is a dispute between the center means the central government and two or more states or between the states uh, there is any kind of dispute in this case the case will directly go to the supreme court why it is original it is original because the supreme court has the power to hear the case in the first instance for example if any individual is aggrieved if any individual's right has been violated it cannot go directly to the supreme court first it has to approach the subordinate court if the subordinate court does not give satisfactory judgment then to the high court and in case you want to challenge the decision of the high court then to the supreme court however in original jurisdiction only if there is a dispute between center and the state which means that in case of any private individual is raising a dispute that the supreme court is not going to entertain in this case so it is original uh, because the supreme court can hear it in the first instance not through appeal so this is original jurisdiction only involves dispute which are federal in secondly writ jurisdiction article 32 of the uh, indian constitution talks about the right to constitutional remedies for example any indian citizen their fundamental rights have been violated so what they can do they can directly approach the supreme court understand that it is different from original jurisdiction this is writ jurisdiction and the supreme court can issue the following writs these writs will be discussed uh, in the next lecture where we talk about fundamental rights so these are the different writs which can be issued by the supreme court and an aggrieved citizen a citizen whose fundamental rights have been violated can directly go to the supreme court however this power of the supreme court is not exclusive what does it means it means that it is not the supreme court alone which enjoys this power if any citizen approaches the high court the high court also has the power to issue writs but in case of original jurisdiction the power to center uh, to settle the dispute between center and the state only the supreme court can do so understand it carefully in case of original jurisdiction only the supreme court has original exclusive power but in case of writ jurisdiction the indian constitution gives both the supreme court and the high court the power to issue writs third is appellate jurisdiction appellate comes from the word appeal so the appeal lies with the supreme court against the high court in the four categories in case of any constitutional dispute if there is any question of a uh, constitutional fact involved in case of any civil matter criminal matter 
one can start from the subordinate court appeal to the high court and then again to the supreme court so these are all the special categories however under this jurisdiction the supreme court can transfer to itself cases from one or more high court for example uh, your particular case is going on in the high court so the supreme court has the power to transfer that case to itself and decide in case it is a matter of extreme uh, public interest or public importance then is advisory jurisdiction from the name you can understand it is about advice now who seeks the advice article 143 of the indian constitution authorizes the president so for example the president is in doubt and wants to take the opinion of the supreme court in case of any question of law which is of public importance then they can ask the supreme court and its judges to give the opinion however the supreme court judges are not bound to give the advice but if the case involves any pre constitution treaties so in that case the supreme court is bound to give the advice and once the supreme court has given the advice it is however not bound uh, binding on the president so for example supreme court has given a particular advice and if the president does not want he can completely avoid taking that advice so this is about advisory jurisdiction and lastly court of record what does it mean for example supreme court is delivering some uh landmark judgments some major changes so those judgments are always preserved and in case of any future cases future legal cases they can be used as reference so these judgments are kept as record and can be used in future purposes it also the court of record uh, the jurisdiction of court of record here also means that the supreme court has the power to punish for the contempt of the court so if any individual or any entity is trying to malign the supreme court then the supreme court has the power to punish for the of the court lastly is the power of judicial review what does review means review means overseeing observing and making changes or reviewing a particular aspect so the supreme court of india can examine the constitutionality what does it mean when the legislature passes any law or when the executive passes any order whether or not those are in the spirit of the constitution whether they are not violating the constitution this is the task of the supreme court it is the power of the supreme court to examine that however in the indian constitution no such article explicitly mentions so indirect references are there but there is no article in the constitution which mentions the phrase judicial review now what is the scope of judicial review and how does the supreme court perform the task of judicial review we have to understand that we have borrowed this uh, feature from the american constitution however in case of america it is more broader broader in america what is followed is due process of law as against india where it is procedure established by law so for example any law is violating the constitution if in case it comes for review the supreme court how does it review the law or the order it will only restrict itself to see whether the law has been made by following all the procedure so if the procedure is right for them the law is constitutional but the supreme court does not go further that whether the law that is made is reasonable or not for example there is a very classic case that if there is a law that all blue eyed babies should be killed okay so in case of due process of law what does the supreme court see that whether this law that talks about such a horrible uh, punishment it has it been passed in a correct procedure or not if it has been passed then the supreme court decides that yes this is a constitutional uh, this has followed all the uh, spirit of the constitution it is in the spirit of the constitution and is right it will not go into checking whether such a right will violate an individual's right 
such a law will violate the human rights of a person so this is just an example to show you all in case of the due process of law the supreme court first checks whether the procedure has been followed or not while making the law and the next step is to see whether the law that is finally made is people friendly or not whether it has good policy implications or not so this was roughly the power and the jurisdiction of the supreme court nevertheless the supreme court is the guardian of the uh, rights of the individual it plays an extremely important role in protecting our constitution it protects and upholds the fundamental law of the uh, law of the land and that's why the position and the power of the supreme court is unparalleled so this is it for today's lecture